Hello and welcome back to Get Up and Game. My name is Josh and man, you take a couple weeks off and a lot of stuff can happen. I just got done recording my take on the new rules reference guide and now I want to take a look at the angel hero that got announced. I haven't had a chance to make a video about this yet. And I know this article is a little bit older, but I still want to just take a look at these cards and share my thoughts and the things I'm excited about. And I'm actually kind of glad that it took me a minute to get to Angel because when the announcement was first made and I was reading through the article and looking at his cards, I'll admit I was a little underwhelmed, which is really unusual for me. Usually I'm incredibly excited about every new hero and I'm very, very positive and high on them. And Warren here left me just a little bit cold, just a little like, eh. Now part of that is the fact that I've just never been that big of a fan of the character. You know, you look at the original five X-Men and they all have such cool powers or such interesting characters. And I always thought Angel was just a little bit boring. He's just a guy who can fly and is rich and he is OK. And then they tried to make him a lot more interesting with the whole Archangel thing. And I don't know, that just never did anything for me either. And then even later on when he got a secondary mutation and he got like super duper cool healing blood. I don't know. I'm just never, never particularly cared about this character. So when we were looking at the silhouettes and trying to figure out who all those heroes were, I said that I thought Nightcrawler was the one who was clearly in a trench coat, even though I think I knew in my heart of hearts it was probably Angel. I was really, really just would prefer it to be Nightcrawler. So all that to say, I wasn't that excited. So I think if I had made a preview video immediately, it might have been a little bit more eh, negative would be strong, but just a little bit less excited than what I usually get for these. But had some time to sit and think about him. And just toss some things around in my mind. And of course, seeing what everybody else has to say, there's been a lot of discussion and, and I've come around. I, I really think he's going to be a lot of fun and I'm a lot more excited about him than I initially was. Now he pales in comparison to Psylocke for how excited I am for him. Uh, so when they come out on the same day, I know who I'm playing first, but, but I, I am pretty excited about Angel. I do think he looks pretty cool. But since the article has been out for a little while, I'm going to try to go through this quickly. I know I always say that and then the video still ends up being 45 minutes, but I'm really going to try. So we're going to look at his alter ego here. Uh, it's pretty standard, but it is nice that he has 12 hit points. That is a lot for an X-Man. For some reason, they've all been pretty low. And just in general, 12 hit points is really nice to have. That's basically a whole extra villain attack you can take to the face more than a lot of other heroes. So that alone is pretty beneficial, especially considering he has this alter ego ability where he can heal one damage just for free, just by flipping down. So that'll be nice. So he has a lot of health. You think of him kind of a being as, as a being a tank, maybe you'll be able to flip down. You could also heal with the X mansion potentially because he's a mutant. You can heal with crew quarters. So he's going to be able to take some hits and then heal right back up, which is good. Go do his first hero form where he is angel is two thwart, one attack, two defense. The one attack is never that exciting to see, but two thwart is super nice, especially if you're a solo player. And as the Angel of Life ability response after you play an aerial event, draw one card, limit once per phase. And of course, he has the aerial trait and the X Force trait. So we've had one other hero had aerial printed right on them. And that was Spectrum. And it was definitely fun to be able to use the aerial cards with her just because, you know, so many other heroes can get aerial with just one other card in their kit. And I know for me, I wouldn't rarely even bother to build a deck with aerial cards. And a hero like that, if I have to work that hard to get the aerial card out, because what if it's the bottom card in my deck or I just not able to play it? So it was fun with Spectrum to be able to play with those cards. But here it's going to be really fun because those cards are pretty good and he gets greater benefit for playing them. He gets to draw a card back. So basically, you know, reducing the effective resources by one cycling his deck faster. That's going to be really nice. You're going to be able to just play Ever Vigilant, play Dive Bomb, play the big thwarty one. Um, the name of it is escaping me, but the three costs where you can spread the five thwart around is nice. So you're going to be able to use those cards really well because you're going to be able to draw a card back, which is nice. But not only that, you could also potentially open the card and turn it horizontal and have the Archangel zero thwart to attack three defense, aerial and X-Force. And he has the ability Angel of Death response after you play an aerial event, deal damage to an enemy equal to that event's printed cost. So you're either going to get a card back or just deal a chunk of damage. And most of the aerial cards aren't cheap. So you're going to at least get two, three, maybe four damage from this effect and still also get the bonus, of course, the benefit of the aerial card itself. So that is going to be really cool. It's nice that it can be dealt to any enemy. So you could just use this to take out a minion if it's the right amount of damage or, you know, you could just hit the villain with it. It's nice. Now there is this pesky 
acceleration icon right here. So and when you end your turn as Archangel and you go to the villain phase, you are going to be allowing the villain to add an additional threat to the main scheme. And, you know, I'm not super thrilled about this, especially as a solo player, because that is 100% more threat as opposed to, say, a four player game where it's only 25% more threat and it's much more negligible. So you're definitely not going to be wanting to end your turn in Archangel form, but I just kind of view it as similar to Ant-Man where you probably don't want to end your turn in giant any more often than necessary because of the reduced hand size. So it's kind of the same thing here, you know, flip up to Archangel if there's a good reason to do so, but hopefully you can flip back down and he does have a card that allows him to do an extra flip on his turn. So maybe try to time your angel turns when you flip up, you know, do a big chunk of damage, you know, you're going to play your dive bomb or that three cost. Or that three cost card that I'm completely blanking on the name of the one with Nova on it. Uh, you know, you get a good chunk of damage and then hopefully you can, you can flip back down because you definitely don't want to be putting extra threat on the main scheme any more often than necessary. And another thing that's, I find weird about this form, you know, he has zero thwart, which is fine. You know, all he cares about is attacking. I really wish he had three attack and two defense because since I think it is unlikely that you're going to want to end your turn in this form very often, you know, his three defense is kind of wasted. You know, normally I see that three defense and I think, oh man, I'm going to play perfect defense, unflappable, hard to ignore, it's going to be great. But I don't really want to end my turn with his three defense very often because I'm going to get that extra threat. So I feel like that's kind of a wasted stat. I really wish he had three attack instead, but that's not how he works. So be it. Plus, uh, I just, uh, he looks so awesome with this sideways art. I, I would love to see more of that. That looks fantastic. We'll start looking at some of his cards here. He has a three cost event, adaptive plumage with the aerial attack and thwart traits. Hero action thwart. If you are angel, remove three threat from a scheme and confuse an enemy. Or if you are archangel, you can deal four damage to an enemy and stun it. So there's really interesting split design here. It kind of feels like vision where depending on what form you're in, the card does one thing or the other. It's nice that it has all these traits because then it'll be easy to discount. You know, three is kind of a lot, especially for just three threat or four damage. But of course, if you're angel, you're also going to be drawing a card back if this was the first aerial event you played. And if you're Archangel, you're all going to be doing an additional three damage. So it's really going to be seven damage in a stun or three threat from a scheme, a confuse and a card draw. And I really, really like the sound of that. And I always appreciate built in stun and confuse. So that card is really nice. He has the one cost event aerial agility. This is his defense card. And all of his cards, by the way, pretty much are all aerial traded. And of course that, that, plays into his abilities, but that also means you're going to be able to discount them with team building exercise. And that is also going to matter for a card we're going to look at later. He has this aerial agility card. When an enemy attacks, if you are angel, ignore each boost icon and each boost ability for this attack. That's fine. You know, we already have a defiance and protection that's zero that basically does the same thing. So you're paying one for that. So this is a much better card. If you're archangel, give your hero a tough status card and game retaliate one for this attack. So you could get a tough for one, deal a little bit of damage back, which is nice, but I don't want to be ending my turn in Archangel form very often. I don't think, I mean, you know, maybe when we play him, it's not that big of a deal, but it feels like I don't want to be in Archangel form during the villain phase. So I'm a little bit less excited about this defense card than I normally am. You know, you think of like Bulletproof Bell from Rogue was just so awesome, or the, uh, the Gambit one. You know, the more recent ones have just been really, really cool. And this one is a little bit of a letdown. Plus, the way this one works, Archangel will give your hero a tough status card. And I, the, the timing of this, you would actually lose the tough immediately to the attack. So it's basically one to prevent the damage. Yeah, as far as defense cards go, this one definitely doesn't excite me that much. Uh, the two cost event, Natural Flight. Hero action thwart, remove four threat from a scheme. So that's four for two is pretty good. And if you're Angel, thwart ignores the crisis icon and the patrol keyword. And that you know, it tends to be useful more often than you might think, but either way, four for two is still pretty good. And of course you're going to get to draw a card back. You can reduce the cost easily. So definitely just a nice solid thwart card. Here we have a razor dive, a three cost event, uh, deal six damage to an enemy. If you are Archangel, this attack gains overkill and piercing. So essentially it's going to be nine damage. Well, it's going to be six damage with overkill and piercing, and then and another three damage to an enemy somewhere. So he very clearly has his thwart form and his damage form. 
And the fun thing about it is going to be trying to get the best of both abilities. So you're going to try to play one event in the angel form and to draw the card and then go over to the archangel form to play another one to deal damage because you're going to really want to try to maximize and get the effects of both hero forms, which I think is the part that kind of brought me around on having fun with them. Because I look at cards like, you know, I mentioned I wasn't that excited about the defense card. And this card is, you know, a solid threat removal card, but there's nothing exciting about it. You know, by getting card to draw the card back will be nice. But it's trying to plan your turn in such a way where I want to play one in Angel and one in Archangel and then hopefully find a way to get back to Angel before the end of the round. I think that's the stuff that's going to be fun and kind of got my thinking around. But otherwise, his cards to me are very just straightforward. They just remove some threat and deal some damage. It's the part I was a little bit less thrilled about. So here we have the two cost event Metamorphosis this is one of the cards that I think is going to make them very fun to play. I love these form changing cards. So as an action, you get to change forms. And then if you are Warren, Warren Worthington, so if you go to Alter Ego, you'll get to draw a card in addition to also being able to heal. Uh, if you flip to Angel, you can remove two threat from a scheme. And if you go to Archangel, you can deal three damage to an enemy. And now keeping in mind, if you do the Angel thing, you're also going to get to draw a card. And if you do the Archangel thing, you're also going to do an additional two damage. And again, I like that it's a separate two damage. It goes to, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily go to the same enemy that the event is targeted at. So just a lot of versatility, a lot of flexibility. I very much always appreciate that. And the fact that you're going to be able to use this to go to Alter Ego is nice because then you can still flip back to Hero Form. And so you can get the benefits of being an Alter Ego, which in this case, you're at least going to get to draw a card and heal one. And, you know, if you have any other supports in play to take advantage of, you'll be able to do that. And then if you have Moira McTaggart in play and you flip back up, you'll get to draw another card. So there's a lot of fun things that you're going to be able to do with this card. So I'm excited about that. Now we get this avian anatomy. I think this is the card that's probably the most exciting thing about angel. I think you're gonna be able to do a lot of fun things with this resource response. After you spend this card to pay for an aerial event, return that event to your hand after resolving its effects. This kind of stuff is awesome. You know, any kind of recursion, you can always do some really fun combo -y stuff and it doesn't even have to be an angel event necessarily, just any aerial event. So you can get back your dive bomb, your ever vigilant, any of the ones that you're building your deck around. So you can just play them over and over and it's really cool. And if nothing else, it's giving you the resource back. If you do it in angel form, you're getting, you know, another card back potentially. So this is going to just create a lot of really fun moments. Very, very excited about this. You know, it's a wild resource that might help for some various things. Always nice to have those. You know, it's nice to have double resources in a hero kit and this isn't a double, but it kind of is because you're getting a card back. Even if you can't play it again, you're still getting that resource back. So that's just really, really cool. I, haven't done the numbers to look at how many copies he hopefully at least has a couple copies of this because I think this is going to be a lot of fun. So that is it for all the angel cards. And yeah, overall, just incredibly straightforward. He just thwarts and deals damage. Like there's really no gimmick here other than trying to get the best of both of his hero forms, I think. But he looks really solid. I think he's going to play well. I think he's going to work really well in solo because he's so versatile. That's such a huge thing. In solo play is just to be to be able to respond to every single thing that can happen. You're just gonna be throwing the damage around, removing threat. It's gonna be really fun to draw the extra cards, to return the cards to your hand, just to build decks based all around Ariel. You're probably gonna put three team building exercises in his deck because you're gonna be playing so many Ariel cards. And also, you know, you could potentially use those to trigger X to play X Force allies, which will be really nice. So speaking of that, and I misspoke, this is still an angel card because this is his ally. So we get Psylocke here at three cost, one for one attack. Seems low for a three cost, but she is Psionic and X-Force. She has the heal response after Psylocke attacks. If you are Angel, she heals one damage. So essentially, you can uh, just keep attacking with her. Or if you're Archangel, you get to ready your hero, which is pretty nice. So you could make use of that to attack again or whatever else you want to do with him. So a really, really solid signature ally. That, you know, if you are running three team building exercises, that X-Force is going to help you play her cheaper. So that's going to be really good to have. And now we're out of the Angel cards and we're looking at the Power of Flight. I'm very excited about these new Power of cards in Basic. We saw the Power of the Mind in the Psylocke preview. And now we have the Power of Flight. Double the number of resources this card generates while paying for an Aerial card. Obviously, that's going to pay for pretty much all of Angel's cards. So you're going to be able to have six doubles that are going to affect his cards. But the nice thing about this is it also pays for allies and uh, allies tend to be expensive. <laughs> and so this power of flight being able to help pay for aerial allies is going to be really cool potentially. 
Hopefully we can find some really good ones to play with him. You're going to make good use of this. It's a bit of a bummer that this is a lightning resource and not a mental resource because, of course, everybody loves hone technique and dive bomb so very much. And obviously Angel is going to run that very well. But, you know, you can still use this to pay for half the dive bomb and you'll just come up with a uh, mental resource somewhere else to get that big bonus. But it, it's almost like they kind of knew, like, we don't want this to combo with own technique. So let's make sure it's not a mental card, though. Of course, the power of the mind was the mental one. So whatever we get, power of flight is the energy one and the power of, you know, whatever we get with X-23 or Deadpool, presuming that that's the other two heroes, will be the, you know, aggression one. So very cool. So here's an aerial ally that you could pay for with that card. Siren, a four cost, two thwart, two attack. So nice to have two thwart in protection, even if she does cost four. And after she attacks, stun a minion. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. Stunning a minion sometimes be really nice. There's some really nasty, beefy minions in certain scenarios these days that you can't always kill right away, especially if you're playing protection. So she can just hold one back. It's sort of protection's MO. It's less about killing them than it is about slowing them down. I think she's pretty decent now. Four cost. Uh, I tend to not play a lot of four cost allies, but if I am running three team building exercises and the power of flight, I can see her making it into a deck. That two thwart's probably going to be handy. Now, Warpath is very interesting. Another four cost. Two thwart with two consequential, two attack with one, four health and toughness. So that's all awesome. And after he defends against an attack, play an event with a hero action ability from your hand, paying its costs. So you're going to be able to play whatever hero event you happen to have at your hand at the time during the villain phase after he defends. And he's going to be able to do it at least once because he has toughness. And I haven't taken the time to come up with the implications here, but I'm sure people have. And it's just fascinating. You know, we've seen with Ghost Spider how nice it is to just be able to do a big chunk of damage or a big chunk of threat removal right in the middle of the villain phase. Sometimes that can be very beneficial. And so I'm sure there are some very cool combos that you're going to be able to do with him. This feels like a build around card. Like you're going to have a certain idea of an event in mind that you're going to want to use him to defend and then drop some kind of bomb in the villain phase. And just, that's going to be really fun. Cause there's nothing else like it in the game. If, if nothing else, it's just something completely different. And it definitely makes a four cost ally a little bit more interesting than they often are. And he is aerial, so you can get discounts on him. So that's nice too. Speaking of aerial, we have the zero cost aerial intervention event, uh, aerial interrupt. When a character would take any amount of damage from an attack, exhaust an aerial character you control to prevent up to three of that damage. Now on the surface, this card isn't very exciting to me because you can just pay one for a sidestep to prevent three damage. But the thing that's nice about this is it's not a defense card. So if you're one of those lucky people that gets to play this game multiplayer all the time, you can use this to prevent damage being dealt to other people without making yourself the target of the attack, you can just reduce that damage by three by exhausting, you know, an aerial character. So hopefully you've got some cheap aerial allies because you probably don't want to be exhausting your hero for this. But either way, it's a way to prevent damage being dealt to somebody else. And there isn't a lot of that in the game. So this is actually a pretty cool card once I realized that multiplayer was a thing. Uh, and here's a, a card that was very, very interesting to me at first, and I've cooled on quite a bit but it still could be good. One cost event, taunt, hero action. The villain attacks you. Other characters cannot defend against this attack. Draw three cards. When I first saw this card, I was just like, oh my gosh, draw three cards for one. And then I kind of proxied it up and threw it in a deck for a hero we won't mention who it was that I thought would really enjoy this card. And it worked fine. But you're essentially paying two resources to draw three cards. And you're taking a villain attack to the face that you cannot chump block. And then the heroes that don't mind being attacked or want to be attacked, you know, they can get some sort of benefit from it, like Drax or Spider-Ham. You know, there, there is an extra added element to this, or like Spider-Man, you know, you're getting a card back. He's probably really the best person to play this with. You know, it really helps you find certain cards that you might be looking for. You know, it's not really drawing you that many cards because you're giving up two to draw three, but, you know, it's filtering cards. It's helping you find cards you might be looking for. Plus... A lot of times when you're playing protection, you're going to have cards in your hand that you're just not going to use because they are probably defense events. So if you give up a defense event to play this, you know, you draw three cards that might be more useful. Yes, you're getting attacked, but you're playing protection. So you're probably well set up to make use of that attack, or at least it won't be that detrimental. So I still think it's, it's a good card. At first, I was like blown away by it. And I thought this is going to be amazing. And after playing around with it for a little bit, it, it is neat. 
and it definitely has its place and i think it's it's a good card if not uh, as exciting as i uh, initially thought it was but i think certain heroes are really going to like this i think this is going to be great in spider-man just to draw a lot of extra cards do some fun things so that's going to be really cool so i love that this card exists here we have containment strategy uh, this is a very interesting one cost upgrade attached to a non-permanent side scheme max one per side scheme so you know this is completely outside of the realm of protection this is a, a normally a justice thing attaching cards to side schemes after a hero defends against an attack remove one threat from attached scheme two threat instead if that hero took no damage from that attack so essentially this is side scheme threat removal in protection which we don't have a lot of but we've been getting more lately and the nice thing about here is after a hero defends against an attack it's not necessarily you so if you are playing multiplayer you can just throw this out on the table and a side scheme and everybody can kind of chip away at it now they do have to defend and that's not often something that happens you know people are typically defending with their allies or maybe they're taking the hit or you know maybe one person's defending for everybody but either way as long as a hero is defending you're going to be chipping away at a side scheme which again just isn't something that protection is good at so i think that this could be a pretty decent card in the right situations the uh, team up card here two cost event soaring hearts team up angel and psylocke you can only have one it is aerial and psionic traded so it could be paid for with either the power of the mind or the power of flight which is very cool and that would fully pay for it because two is kind of a lot for a team up card but you could essentially get it for one card as a hero action you can search your discard pile for an identity specific event and add it to your hand and ready angel and psylocke so this can get a lot of work done Anytime you can get your hero cards back, that's always good. But being able to put one right back in your hand in hero form is just about unheard of. That This might be the only way you can do that, actually. That's going to be absolutely awesome. Psylocke is going to be able to shuffle this back in with the psionic trait if she wants to, just to keep playing this over and over again. So I think it's going to be particularly good for her. But yeah, I think this card is going to be fantastic. If you are playing it as Angel and you can use your Psylocke ally to keep readying Archangel over and over again, I think you're going to be able to get a lot done with this. I think this is one of the better team up cards and one that I would actually consider using even in solo, just hoping to get the ally into play. Cause I think both of the allies are pretty good for both of these heroes, but playing them together is going to be really, really good for this card. So this, this one is really exciting. And finally we get the player side scheme. I'm still blown away that we're getting another one in each hero pack. Cable is going to have, I don't know, probably eight or to 10 of these to play with. It's crazy to me. Uh, render medical aid it is a unique zero cost goes to the victory display and when defeated each player heals a total of five damage from among characters they control now i'm thankful it's a zero cost free threat is almost kind of an ask for a protection deck to remove but of course you have your your hero cards and your hero abilities as well to be able to remove threat but being able to heal five damage from among characters you control is going to be really really cool to you know take damage off of the allies especially protection has some interesting allies to uh, use their abilities like james proudstar or i think of you know if pinpoint's taking some damage maybe you want to clean him up so that you can keep using his cool ability things like that i just i love these player side schemes and i think being able to heal five damage is a pretty significant chunk healing is not often that exciting in the game but being able to heal five in hero form even if this just all goes to your hero that's one to two attacks from the villain that you can take again that you don't have to worry about defending get you really out of the danger zone that's basically half your health so these are really really exciting and and i'm glad they are you know they needed to be they wouldn't have been that much fun if we got this cool new card type and then the effects were just sort of middling like oh so so like these feel like worthwhile like i'm going to go to the trouble to get this card in play and get it done so that is very exciting so I think that's everything with Angel. Like I said, overall, I uh, started out low and I've gotten, you know, decently excited for him. He's still, uh, you know, the least excited I am for all the X-Force heroes so far. Domino is still the top for me with Psylocke being an incredibly close second. And then, you know, Cable is going to be very good. And I, I am looking forward to playing Angel. I think he's going to be fun. So, yeah, uh, those are my thoughts. Thank you so much for joining me. It was nice to finally get to do this. And uh, if you enjoyed your time here, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you next time we get up in game. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.